Yeah, that's a feature that you can do from the little, like, little VV key fob. Little key fob, yeah, you can do it. It's just a little key fob. (laughs) Yeah, which the key fob works on, like... Hello, welcome to Co-op the Podcast at some point here, after weeks of absence. Yeah, we've been gone for one whole week, Jesus Christ. That's just what it feels like it's been too. So much has happened in the time since we last talked to you guys. Uh, by the way, I'm Jesse. Thank you. That's how we usually start this podcast. And I'm your co-host, Raven. Welcome to Co-op the Podcast. No, I think how we start the podcast is however we want. And I think that is the charm in our opener. That's true. That's true. People yeah. love it. We've gotten trillions of fan mail coming in that they're like, don't ever change literally anything you ever do. Yeah, we read each and every piece of the fan mail fry and that all. comes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't understand what that is. <laughs> That's okay. And like, maybe I'll like listen and like see, but I need like two sound bites where I have like somebody who's not doing it, the same person, and they do it. And then maybe, maybe it'll make sense. And yeah, then, we're referring to vocal fry people. But I think they hurt you. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we're back. We're yeah, recording. we're back. And we're, we're recording. It. Okay, we adjusted some audio stuff. So if vocal fry is a real thing, maybe it's not happening maybe anymore. Maybe we fixed it. Maybe. maybe Jesse just sounds like sweet, sweet jazz on a Friday night with your girl. Maybe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> maybe not. Uh, but yeah, so what? What I forgot Things what we were... Things have changed. I mean, a lot has happened since our last episode, which was a billion years ago. Uh, our last guest was a Tyrannosaurus Rex. That was mm. how long ago it was. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Billions of years. Gotcha. Yeah. Billions of billions. Yeah, it's been a while. A lot has happened. Um, we were super busy uh, getting a car. We did, yeah, which we will be talking about in this episode, so I don't want to spoil much of anything. Yeah. But that's what uh, distract us. It's stressful buying a car, guys. It's fucking stressful. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of... I mean, Richard click, and Jenny click. went today to get a car. It took half a day. It took half a day. It took us like two weeks of just like... Which we credit ourselves for them wanting to get a car. Yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, though it makes practical decision for them. Yeah. So um, anyways, uh, what else uh, can we talk about? Uh, Other than the car. Yeah. we're going to save that for the topic of the conversation. Yes, exactly. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, just kind of go over our announcements and that can kind of get us, uh, Yeah, announcements. That's usually yeah, where we start. That's usually See, it's been so thing. long, we just don't know. We just don't know. We just don't know. Um, so next week's episode, I want to talk about it this episode because I think it's really exciting. Next week's episode is a and a episode where you asked us questions. Which we did that before, right? So there's like an example out there. Didn't we do Q&A as a part of another, another episode? I remember pulling them out of a hat. Oh, no. That was, like, my first time. It was, like, a challenge. So it's kind of like that. Oh, okay. I thought that was the same. Yeah. No, it's not the same. We didn't ask people, and they gave us those. I just wrote them Uh, down on pieces of paper. I made them up. you questioned us. Yes, exactly. I questioned you. But go back and, like, uh, listen to that episode. Episode, because I have no idea. Um, And (laughs) it'll give you a little example of uh, what we were working with. But, yes, Q&A. But that's next week. So join us for that next Tuesday. This Tuesday is July 2nd. That's July 9th. So hang yeah. out with us. Uh, listen to us. There are questions that came uh, from... Our Patreon, our Twitter, our yeah, Insta. Wide audience. Yeah, our Google. Facebook, all on social. Didn't have anybody send any emails in, but that's okay. Mm. I, yeah. I got a postcard. You got a postcard. Oh, nice. Where was it from? France. Very nice, very nice. Look I up. saw one that was from Winnipeg. Mm. Mm-hmm. We have we have fans everywhere. Interesting. interesting, 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 interesting. Um, so aside from that, um, I did want to announce you can find me on Scraticus Academy twitch.tv slash Scraticus. Um, Thursday, so my last episode playing Araki, uh, the Half Orc Ranger is coming up. I believe it's July 11th because I won't be um, in the stream on July 4th because that's an American holiday. Yep. America's birthday. Birthday. 
And then um, I will be there the 11th, but I won't be there the 18th. The 18th is their finale. So go, still go watch that. Uh, give them your support because um, we love their stream and we love them. Um, but uh, my last episode is July 11th. So yeah. and you can find it on twitch.tv slash Scraticus. There you go. And we'll uh, post a link. Cause... We post links. I post links every week. Yeah. But... And some of you are in there. I see a lot of familiar faces that are there supporting co-op the podcast we had our uh dragonborn wizard coop which is our uh co-op the podcast yep. mascot he was on there for a while he, his character just left after giving Araki a dope ass robe of eyes so we love him and yeah, we yeah, loved yeah. how sage ophelia who is our dm at sage ophelia holly how she played him it was fantastic um, so yeah, twitch.tv slash Scraticus. I think they're Thursdays also on at seven thirty. Yes. As well for people to go catch up on past ones. Video and stuff, on yeah. demand. You could just look up Scraticus Academy and it's Fading Footsteps is the series name. Yeah. Um and again it's seven thirty Pacific Standard Time if you want to catch it live on Twitch or ten thirty Eastern Standard. Okay. Yep, yep. Um what else do we have? Deer? Uh so I mean our own selfless plugs into uh yeah. check out our patreon co-op the podcast We're way more important. uh yeah our website co yeah. the podcast.com mm-hmm. uh what else uh, buy a shirt buy shirts buy a shirt yeah uh go to facebook and check us out go to twitter and check us out go to instagram and check us out hey, whatever if you're here and you're listening to this podcast right now and you think we're pretty cool people i mean because we are uh just head down to the bottom of your um uh, podcast app and write us a review. Whichever one. We're on them all. Yeah, we're on most of them. Yep. Um, write reviews. Five stars. We only take five stars. Yeah. If it's not five stars, we send it back. We send it back. Four stars, we send it back. Six stars, we send it back. Five stars or nothing. How do you send coffee back? <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, I think those are all of our announcements. We're going hot and quick and stuff because, again, we have a super busy week coming up with, like, the fourth and we have family coming into yep, town we got family yeah. coming into town yeah uh, a lot going on <sighs> is this boring you i was reading something about uh yawning i forgot though i could be a sociopath because i didn't yawn i watched you yawn and i did not yawn yeah that's that's not 100 percent i'm gonna people say you don't always yawn when they see other people also like like there is a psychosomatic response but you're more likely to yawn when you see other people yawn if you've heard that there is a response that you're more likely to you know what i mean but i have heard that there is a response but i did not yawn and i think i'm a sociopath right <laughs> but just i found that interesting is like is if people who read that oh yeah you'll yawn if other people are more likely to yawn That's if other also people yawn. psychosomatic yeah because somebody told you you're supposed to yawn exactly yeah yeah it's so. just one big glorious circle but yeah there's some uh post on reddit somebody was talking about yawning and why it happens and i found it very enlightening I but i can't remember any of it now and well, i'm just like oh, okay. i know that when you yawn like while you're working out it's because your brain needs more oxygen so sometimes when i'm in yoga and they're like you're supposed to breathe as you move through every pose i'm so bad at that i cannot synchronize my breathing to like going from like downward dog yeah. into plank into chaturanga into well i just think like they breathe faster than i yeah, do i'm, I'm like, like how the what fuck the fuck do you breathe I, that fast <laughs> yeah no well, it's because like, they're not actually breathing while they do the pose the hypocrites because they're yeah, telling you to breathe and exactly. it's like okay well they so, can't breathe while yeah, you can't breathe it. and say it at the same time it's like i don't inhale it's like you can't inhale and say the word inhale at the same time yeah i also feel really bad because it seems like maybe i'm bored in the practice but it's like no my brain is just about to go all wonky sparkly yeah. lights because <laughs> i'm not breathing um so yeah yawning but yeah i'm this yawning like yawning, crazy right now yeah this is weird. a yawning podcast do you but yeah. want my coffee cup and pour some coffee in it for yourself no it's not because i'm tired i think it's just because i'm breathing because i'm breathing yeah your Needing brain oxygen. needs more oxygen i don't need caffeine i need oxygen which maybe though caffeine opens up the pathways in the brain i don't know well some i more mean it increases blood, blood flow. flow right some more oxygen can actually give places oh my gosh I don't know. this is a science podcast now guys we've changed we were a yawning podcast and then we made a quick transition yeah. into a science well podcast. you know we're well known for our, our accuracy. scientific <laughs> thought yeah uh, i believe for. everything we say is 100 percent accurate for sure i think so so unless it's not and we'll get sued if we say it is i don't think we'll get sued for saying everything we say we could is for right. negligence 
I mean, we're also going to say, like... Don't believe we like Or, like, saying. illegal skimmer. We're not liable for anything you guys do. Okay, there we go. Now Fun. we're safe Yay! forever. Forever. Yeah, we are never liable for anything you guys do. Ever. Ever. We Unless just it's it. good. If you get a Nobel Peace Prize because of something from this podcast... I think we have to just I want leave half it. Of the... I think we just leave it as a blanket statement. Just to say but safe. But I wanted half the medal. Yeah, I mean, well, I don't think there is a medal. I think there is. I think you get like a little medal and and money. I just want the medal though. Maybe it's a plaque. Is it a plaque? I don't know. That, why I'm would it be? I'm interested in a plaque. A medal. I don't know, because it was like, when did they start coming out with plaques versus like medals, which That's medals good. are pretty like historic. That's a good question. I'm gonna say that it was probably first a medal, and then maybe they started giving out. When plaques did the Nobel Peace Prize start? Was and it? then when were plaques invented? I guess that is oh. our question. Guys, uh. send us that information. Um, do our research. I mean, us. Nobel invented TNT, right? That was the guy. Yeah. Dynamite. Yeah. Okay. Dynamite. Uh, nitroglycerin is what he's famous for getting and inventing TNT. So, and then he created the Peace Prize because you know the world runs that way. Ninety uh, percent of people who won the Nobel Peace Prize have probably killed more people why. than your average yeah. person. It's pretty sad. Um, I want to say that it might be something like the 30s. It's a recent. Right, right that's what I'm saying. It's I like, think it's like the 30s. That's probably somewhere, yeah. Well, I mean, TNT was invented well before that, actually. But it might not have been invented. Like, he might just be the namesake of it. He might right. not be the. Like, maybe after that, he was like, oh shit. It's like Tony Stark. Because they used to use TNT to, like, you know, make the railroads. Dynamite. So, like, the 1800s sometime. Late 1800s. I mean, 1930s. I mean, he's no. He I mean, we could life. Google this right now, but I'm not gonna. Bing it. We could bing it. Yeah, bing it then. Yeah, but we're still not going to. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, not gonna do it. Um, what? It's time for hot that's cakes. It, though. That's it. Yeah, I think that's all the announcements. God have. damn. Uh, hot cakes. Yeah. So the office is officially leaving Netflix. Yeah, January uh, which 2021. Which is so fucking stupid. You wanna know why? Because you can't buy. It on Blu-ray. Yeah. No. And I mean, like, yeah, of course, they're going to put it on their own streaming service. But, uh... No, that's the that's the reason why it's leaving. is because yeah. NBC is like, it's coming to our thing, and so everybody come buy our thing. And it's like, NBC, nobody wants that. Literally, I just want to buy every season of The Office on Blu-ray. Yeah. And own it. But it doesn't exist. If they made it on to... DVD, and then I think streaming became popular, and so they didn't bother making it. We could get it on DVD, though. I don't think they have all the seasons on DVD. Oh. Like, it was coming out, you know, every time a season came out. That just also makes me hate NBC more and their distributors. I looked into it one time, and it was just, like, it seemed like the biggest headache to try and get it offline. It was when uh, the, whatchamacallit, um, Oh. the power went out. No, 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 that's separate, but that is, like, that was what I was just thinking. I looked into it one time to buy the DVDs and stuff, and I was like, okay, like, and it seemed like a huge pain. When the power went out, we downloaded them all. We have them on an iPad. I don't think we have every season downloaded. If we get every season downloaded on that iPad and then just turn it on airplane mode forever. Yeah. That iPad now has every season of The Office. Of The Office. Yeah, exactly. That That's just our office yeah. iPad. And I mean, we have we a couple iPads we don't else. use anyways. So. Right. Which yeah. is sad in itself. That's for other reasons. Why not, a bad, not a bad idea. Yeah. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. So yeah, but I think no, there's a limit. No, it's really to upsetting it though that uh, NBC has. Well, it's upsetting one because not. I don't think people are gonna leave Netflix because The Office is leaving. Uh, I actually think there will be some. People Where are that they do. going though? To NBC. I don't think they're gonna go to NBC. You're only gonna get NBC streaming service. I mean, how much is that like? Well, so be, like, the question $10 is, a month? is what else is on it? And what and what else? What other shows are on NBC? I don't know, but there's a lot. Thirty Rock was on NBC. Oh fuck! Are they taking Thirty Rock off? They will, yeah. (gasps) They'll end up taking all those like kind of shows, and you know, so I'm thinking Richard at the store. He they play the Office in the lobby, twenty four seven. Yep. It's a great show. I don't know. Oh. To fill space. I can see him taking his subscription uh, of of Netflix there. How will we ever live without it? 
Superstore. Because it's on Hulu, so I don't really understand. And we're talking, uh, yeah, they'll probably take some stuff off Hulu too. Well, I'm you just know what saying, would be like, interesting? Why is some of it on Hulu and why is some on? Because they can pick and choose. You know, they're gonna the take people... off the profit. Mm, babe, what will yeah. you do? I mean, we might cancel one of our subscriptions for. We no, all of our subscriptions are really important. Mm. Right. But yeah, so here's the thing, right? It's like, this is not the only thing leaving Netflix. Disney stuff. Yeah, Disney stuff is leaving. So there is a lot of stuff. I and mean, we watch Netflix for some of the original content, too. But it seems like now it's really just going to be right. original content and then the CW. And I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if the CW leaves eventually, too. Yeah. You know, so then it's like, okay, well, if that's the case... You know what I honestly want is I want, like, the ability to, like, pay for, I don't know, a service that gets me access to All this services. thing. And then I pick and choose which channels I want. Kind of like cable. the way cable <laughs> used to work. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, like, I'm kind of missing cable because it's, like... Netflix I is just basically a, a cable channel. Yeah. Yeah, it's, like, we're paying like for all these different channels and now it's gonna start costing it's more. basically we're at cable but it costs more yeah guys we fucked up we're and i mean stupid. It, we're paying more for the on-demand f- feature though i guess and you could kind of say like yeah. it's not like there's tuned programming on the netflix channel it's like you can go to the netflix channel and watch whatever you want whenever you want right all right so you know there's kind of that aspect of it but yeah it's it's costing a lot more and maybe it's not worth it but right uh yeah i mean it's it's a huge shame that it's leaving january 2021 2021 so we got like at least you know a year a year and a half, and a half. yeah so plenty of time it, like, 30 more times yeah plenty of time not a huge deal you know maybe an opportunity to for them to release it on blu-ray would be pretty awesome i bet a lot of people would buy it yeah but then people wouldn't pay into the streaming service if this is all they're looking for right so but yeah, it's a shit show. It is a shit show. It's a crazy shit show, and we'll see what happens. But yeah, I think uh, there's probably a market out there for somebody who, like... Is that a per- firework? I don't know. But who purchases access to all these things, like some third party that can yeah. purchase access to all of them. So I pay, like, 20 bucks a month for one subscription service that consolidates all of them in the back end. Because, uh, you know, if That's you could do, like, five screens on Netflix, basically, right, you could have five people paying... So basically, it would limit it and say you only get one Netflix screen. That's upset. Like, that's so Uh, much. Like, just to basically have... I mean, that's cable. Yeah, it would basically be like, yeah, cable. But yeah, it would would be cheaper that way if somebody built a third-party app. So there's an opportunity for somebody to do that, I think. Yeah. Well, let's talk about something that um, is not leaving us and leaving us uh, heartbroken. Um, Stranger Things actually comes out this thursday you guys so hopefully you've made it through your stranger things rewatch uh which we have not we have not done that we just we just haven't um but we're still stuck watching supernatural still, it's and it, it's it officially it sucks supernatural progressively sucks. worse first couple seasons just finger kiss so good um and then it just gets really bad so yeah. anyways um Stranger Things is back this Thursday, so we're probably going to binge watch that at some point. But again, like we said, our family's out of town, so <laughs> bless you. So we have to really, uh, I don't know, look at the internet sparingly during that time. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, we won't be able to catch up on the new stuff for sure. But yeah. I don't, I don't, like, people are good about spoilers, and I think it's fine. Huh, and no, does it I think really, really matter? Here's what spoilers. happens. Eleven gets into some shit with some psychic powers. There's a monster. They seal it back up. Yep. Done. Yep. So good. Okay. We don't need to watch it anymore. <laughs> no, we You're do. Welcome. Shut up. No, we're watching it. You ass. Um, so, yeah. That's all I had to say about that. I just wanted to remind our audience. Yeah, is there anything else, like, uh, big Netflix news coming on? Or not really? No. Cool. That was about it. I didn't grab too many hotcakes for this one, just because we're probably going to spend a lot of time talking about the car. Yeah. So We're pretty stoked on it. Yeah. So next, though, in big casting news, we have two cast news. Um, So the first one, 
Uh, Melissa McCarthy has been cast as Ursula in the live action Little Mermaid film. Um, and I have some choice words. I don't think that Melissa McCarthy was the best. I think they chose her because she is overweight. I'm, yeah. I just don't, I mean. That's the, a reason. No, but I think that that's ridiculous. Because, I mean, you could CGI anybody onto anybody. So, like, why not go with literally anybody else? Because she, she's like goofy comedy to me. And I just don't find that interesting in, as an Ursula. Because she's manipulative. I don't see Melissa McCarthy as ma- manipulative. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, still though, like, it's 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 the Little Mermaid. It's lighthearted enough. Yeah, I just don't, I don't think so for That, her. like, if she, I mean, she'll have to step up. But it's still, she's not stepping all the way up, if you know what I mean. I mean, she wouldn't, I mean. It's still Disney. She's not going to try hard. She's just going to be there. And it's just a big name to attach to this movie. Like, I mean, like Will Smith was big name to attach to um, a big uh, American name because again, so Mulan just came out with uh, some of their casting as well, and Kevin Hart has been um, announced as Mushu. Yeah, and so that it's like in that cast, which great casting choices from that part. A lot of very well known. Yeah. Um, Kevin Hart is like my favorite. Uh... Yeah, but, like, everybody else is very well-known actors in Asia. So I think that that was very well cast on their part uh, for those. But then they have to have some American draw. Well, Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart. Like, he's the best choice they could make. I mean, other than Eddie Murphy. I think he's a good... He is the kind of, I think, this generation's Eddie Murphy. Right, exactly. So I totally agree with that. But then I, I think that... I Melissa just don't think McCarthy. they could have found somebody that was an Asian actor that's as good to play Mushu. Well, yeah, I know. But yeah. that I'm just so what I'm trying to say is that they always attach a big name. Except in Lion King where everybody's just big name American actors. But everybody so, yeah, I think yeah, I think they're just getting the best people to fit the role. Really. Right. But I still think that is they're specifically kind of just there's one big cast member that is kind of like, whoa, huge. How'd they get that person? Will Smith. And I think that that's I agree. supposed to be Melissa McCarthy. Yeah, I agree with that for Will Smith. And like, um. I mean, is Melissa McCarthy that big a. I mean, she's a big name. American comedy actress. I don't know. Yeah. I don't really. I liked her. You know in who would have been Girls. good? Um, Lizzo. The fat blonde, fat Amy would have been good oh shit oh yeah. uh, no that would have been <laughs> awful that would have been great i watched uh this guy that plays bumper um adam divine yeah i watched his comedy special the other day was it good yeah it's pretty stupid well he's kind of he says stupid. that a lot that's why, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay uh but yeah no it was dumb. it was uh it was funny yeah yeah okay but that's yeah that's a good take it just, he kind of like talked about like uh getting uh on that movie what's it called pitch perfect oh and so that's why it was in the I back love of my pitch mind. perfect yeah Bum-ba. yeah apparently he thought it was a baseball movie so he showed oh, up his pitch yeah so he showed up and this is a joke so who knows how real it is but he showed up and is like you know stretching out like getting ready to pitch and he's seen all these people singing and he's like good luck losers <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah that's funny. and then he goes in and he like uh sings and he's like they're like okay so what song have you prepared just you know something from radio whatever and he's trying to think he's like you guys will remember this hit of the time ass, 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 ass. <laughs> and you're like okay yeah hit song on the radio yeah i mean <laughs> yeah. he's not wrong yeah and they're not like, wrong you're in it you're in elizabeth well, banks so, is like fuck yeah dude so suppose they're like well not that song oh, how shit. about another song and so he sang the theme song from full house Oh, that's good, too. Yeah, and he got on. That's funny. Um, so speaking of Elizabeth Banks, uh, this week, it's not on my hotcakes, but this week they uh, released the trailer for Charlie's Angels, and it mm. doesn't look that bad. It looks okay. Like Who's playing Bosley again? Elizabeth Banks. I think that she's a No, great... wasn't there like a name that we saw on the cast list? We're like, is that Bosley? Patrick Stewart. He's somebody else in the film. He no, was in the trailer. No. But it's a uh, darker skinned person to put it delicately and it was because we started we started talking about how bernie mac 
played them in the last one. I and know. how, like, maybe they're trying to Are you to sure they're that. not bringing Bernie Mac back for this? They're right. bringing maybe. him, they're raising yeah. him from the dead. Man, what's it called? Charlie's Angels. This one will, will bang. Everywhere you look, ever. Yeah, it's like, whatever happened to something, something, something. The bare necessities, the milkman, the paper yeah. boy. Oh, weekend TV or something. Yeah, yeah, that, that's it, yeah. Everywhere like, you look. Which is look. apparently exactly what they were looking for. Uh, yeah. Oh, there are multiple Bosleys. Right, this is what it was, yeah. Yeah, do you see, like, on there? Because, yeah, they have um, Jamon. Yeah, and Patrick Stewart. And yeah, Patrick okay, Stewart. Yeah. They're both Bosleys, and then Elizabeth Banks is their main Bosley. Main Bosley. Right, and I think that's, like, been a long thing. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and this is the guy I was thinking of, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, they have multiple Bosleys. There's obviously, like, a story that goes into that. But the trailer was really, it was kind of cool. I, I'm still going to be a fan of the original remake of charlie's angels uh because i mean that was i think yeah I like that, that movie was just too. so cool but i yeah. think like so they have one character in it that um ella um Belaniska, who plays jane um and she reminds me so much of lucy Liu's character and so i like that was a really good kind of like symmetry like symmetry to the original remake yeah. so cute i liked it um that's my take on it so far um yeah and you haven't seen the trailer i'm guessing no i haven't seen the trailer um but yeah i, I mean i'm definitely like down to see the movie but yeah, yeah I'd, I'd like the one with uh the original lucy lou uh yeah drew barrymore um this the other one she looks just like my aunt yeah something about mary cameron diaz. yeah cameron diaz that's the one. <laughs> that's the one she looks just like my aunt though yeah. Um, sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Let's. Uh, Everybody let's move says on. So Melissa McCarthy, I'm not loving the casting. Whatever. Like, I mean, let's it'll wait. Be so, fine. so like when every when Will Smith was cast, I remember everybody talked about it. I did. The trailers, I did. I was so. actually talking with my coworker Ryan, who listens to the podcast. Hi, Ryan. Um, she we were talking about it together. And uh, she said the exact same thing. She was like, when Will Smith was cast, he said the exact same thing. And I feel like I have a pretty good feeling about I'm right on this one. I don't know yeah. how Melissa McCarthy... Man, is Aladdin be. still in theaters? I think so. We haven't seen it. We haven't yeah. seen a lot of the movies recently we said we were going to see. Guys, our life is super, super busy. Super hectic. Um, so speaking of, because we're running low on hot cake time, um, let's talk about so Wheel of Time. Jesse, is yeah. that your favorite book series? It is. It's my favorite book series. I've got a tattoo from Wheel of Time. You do. Yeah. Uh, I've read it many, many times. I've read over... it one time halfway Not all through. The way through yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm still working on it. Yeah. So, you know, it's a really good series. Uh, I know tons of people out there uh, probably have it, read it. Yeah. yeah. Um, Ethan has read it in particular. Ethan, he's a listener. Our good buddy. So Ethan. he's out there. Hi, uh, buddy. He talks about it. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then um, I talked about it with a bunch of people on Scraticus Academy. One of the before we went on stream, yeah. we started talking about Wheel of Time. So it's it's, it's big, huge, it's huge. And if you haven't read it, uh, read it. And yeah. if you are interested, uh, convert to the Mormon faith. <laughs> no, <laughs> sponsor us first. <laughs> the, church, the Church of Mormon. Yeah. Yeah, we just go up to people's doors and give them a podcast cassette and be like, here. Yeah. Have you so heard about the it, Lord thing is, the writer Robert Jordan was Mormon. Yeah. Uh, the They're writer very... who took over, because great story, Robert Jordan died and couldn't finish it, but he passed it on to a... Brandon Sanderson? Yep, Brandon Sanderson is Mormon. I don't think either of them are like, you know, it's... crazy staring into hat Mormons, but I think they're casual Mormons. Yeah. Uh, so there's some undertones. Yeah, there are some undertones. And we'll, we won't spoil anything, but there are undertones. It's not ridiculously religious or anything. It's like the same as all, like, a lot, of fantasy, uh, a lot of fantasy <laughs> yeah. novels have a lot of um, parallels to modern religion. So, well, yeah, I mean, a lot, everything does. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's a good story. Light yeah. versus dark. That whole thing yeah. is just religion uh, boiled down to fantasy books. This one's just yeah. a little bit more. I mean, J.R.R. Tolkien was like huge Catholic Super and he invented. Catholic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, C.S. Lewis. He invented like, fantasy. Yeah. That whole thing. Yeah. 
They're all very uh, religious. Um, but we got our first casting announcement for the yep. TV show because they're actually which adapting is on Amazon. It. I think it's going to be on Amazon. But you guys know how much we love a lot of what Amazon is doing. Yeah. Grand Tour. I mean, we love everything almonds. except their package delivery service, which we is hate them duty so poo poos. <laughs> duty poo poos. Yeah. <laughs> That was really cute. Uh, yeah, no, we hate that. We love the TV yeah. that they're doing. Yeah, like we're paying for two-day delivery, and it takes six days and, every and time the dress without I'm fail. Wearing, the dress I'm wearing is from it's Amazon. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we like that. But it getting here uh, was annoying. Yeah, it's like, why am I paying for two-day shipping when it takes a week? We've talked about this way too much. Let's get into, so they're coming up with a Will of Time Amazon I just series. want them to listen to this and then fix the problem. What? Yeah. Maybe fire one, those people maybe and use one, UPS. They got it right when you were doing that. Yeah. Maybe uh, one driver listens to this and then he tells another driver and then he tells another driver. And either we stop getting packages altogether because they're boycotting us or they just get better because they hear our message. Guys, you're you're not doing great. Listen to our words. Yeah, I, I don't think they're... They're not listening. Okay, yeah, not well, listen. so we, but we like um, Amazon Prime TV, um, and we think that what they're producing is really high quality stuff. Like we haven't seen Handmaid's Tale, but that is it's really supposedly good. good. It's yeah. really good. So what's I her watched name Z. from Mad Men's in it? So. She is. Yep. As so is Alexis Bledel, who is also in Mad Men, and then also mm, in Gilmore Girls. Which one's that one? She's a uh, Rory. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. She's married to what's his face. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 yeah, so um, Amazon, you're doing great work, except for where you're not. Um, but the first cast member is Moraine, who is, um, so if you, she's like a, a kind of like a mage. She's like one of the older, ma- they're called um, Aes Sedai, Aes Sedai, yeah. however you want to say it. Um, Pronunciations are a bitch. I, uh, I was calling things. it. Ace a day, but then I listen to it on audiobook because the books are so long, and the only time I can get through them is during work. Um, and they pronounce it I die, so I was like, "Fuck it, I give up on trying to figure out how to pronounce these things." But um, Moraine, yeah. uh, she's been cast um, by Rosamond Pike. And do you know who Rosamond Pike is, babe? Uh, I think it's pronounced Rosamond. I think you're. Uh saying it too fast i, I went over I'm not the giving a. it the proper Rosamond. uh pronouncing no yes. but i have no idea um, i mean i do because i've seen her picture for this but what has yeah. she been in before she's been in um so the first thing that comes to my mind is pride and prejudice she's in that the one Who with uh, kira knightley she's the older sister okay she's not kira kira knightley she's not kira knightley i would have said kira knightley has been cast as moraine which actually wouldn't have been a bad choice but so I'm just going to get into this, though, real quick. So she is 40 years old, which I think is good. Yeah. Because, like, one thing about the Aes Sedai is they're supposed to be, like, ageless, ageless. kind of, like, in this. And, she and I think she does look, look at 40. She looks, like, 40, but then a young 40. Like, you could totally see how age. she's, like, 30, or you could see how she's, like, 50, or you could see, like, you know, it'd be yeah. really hard to peg her age. Yeah, exactly. Which is the point. Yes. Um, she was also in uh, Gone Girl. Which supposedly she was amazing in Gone Girl. Like oh, she's in Jack Reacher. Oh, is she? I did not know that. Yeah. Ooh. I don't know if I've seen Jack Reacher. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's I like have. The 2012 I have. One. I yeah, have. Good. Yes, I have. Uh, uh, yeah, that's just something I know. And she's also in Die Another Day. Die Another Day. Yeah. I didn't know that either. Yeah. No. Back from the uh, golden age of Bond when Pierce Brosnan was James Bold. Bond. Yes. Uh, and uh, Halle Berry's in that one too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Love Halle Berry. Yeah. We talk about I feel like well. a lot of stuff that um, Rosamund Pike has it been in has been a lot of like very specific English films. And so I'm like, I have no idea what I'm looking at. Is Amazon filming this in the UK? Uh, Potentially. I think I would love for us to do like a casting, like who we would want to cast. She's done a couple voice things too. Where do you see that? I just am looking through her thing, and a lot of them say voice, voice, voice. Cool. So there you Um, But yeah, I would. I wish that, um, or I want us to do like a casting. I just have no idea. You'd have to come up with your choices ahead of time, because that, or else we'd just be there going in circles like all day. So. Yeah, like I don't even. I like I just can't even think off the top of my head. Rand. I know. Yeah, I don't know anybody who's tall and redheaded. 
if Michael Fassbender wasn't so old now. Yeah, or not old. Yeah, because I think actually we had this problem before. We talked about casting for something. The Witcher. Uh, no, it's Terry McGinnis for like a Batman Beyond thing. Yeah, yeah. And we talked a little bit about like it's really like some people we can think of. Like Keanu Reeves would be perfect for Terry McGinnis if he wasn't like forty. Yeah, if they had done it like while he was in like, his, like twenty like, years like ago. Matrix. Yeah. yeah, it would have been really good. Lan. Keanu Reeves. Yeah, Keanu Reeves would be good for Yeah. I would literally sploosh. Be yeah, so, so uh, Moraine travels around with a character called Lan. Lan. Yeah. So. Yeah. And he is like. Big, gruff soldier guy. Big, gruff sword soldier master, guy. Fighter. Sword master. Yep. Badass, yeah. Super cool, dude. Yeah, I think we could do it. Yeah, uh, but uh, I think there's like some hard things. Just because, like, okay, so this like, is a. Uh, Karen, Matt, and one Land. thing they get accused of a lot in the wheel times is having too many main characters they do have a lot of main they characters. do they have too many main characters and they have too many characters that have names that you need to remember they do the same thing in fucking game of thrones if we can follow it along for eight i seasons, bet you if we probably did like character to character uh there's more names in real time more, right i mean there's just more books but i think like so. the characters that, that they do bring up have more importance because like you get you get your main characters and you're following them a lot. You're following them a lot. The other thing about Wheel of Time is it's over. We have a beginning and we have an end and there's a lot in the middle. So it's not going to be like Game of Thrones where it kind of just starts to like taper off because they don't know where it's even Oh yeah, absolutely. Going. It'll be better so done. So I think character development wise, we're fine. And the characters that they will bring up, we know how important they are later. And so you have like your main characters, and then you have your main bad guys, and then you have. But like, that's what I'm saying is like characters in, that you don't. Nobody has to focus on. And you do though. That's the thing is I'm saying it. Think so. In all the books, there'll be like a character in like book nine or eight that's like doing something really important, and you're like, who the fuck is that? And then you have to okay. go to the appendix and you look up who they are, and it turns out in like book three they were like a random I to die walking around the tower that like you know Moraine knew. Right. And now I they're think, leading this faction you know, doing this TV, thing and you're like They do these huh. things that are very important at the beginning of every episode. They recap what's happened before so that you remember important yeah, stuff. Yeah, they'll have to do that. But like yeah. my point is like they have like there's like probably like 50, 60 like named characters that we need to like are important enough. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know. And then they're on top of that 12 main main characters that are yeah. really important, you know. And you're like yeah, what the fuck? Yeah, cuz you have like the three guys, the two girls, Rain, Lan, and then, um, um, Min as well. Min, fuck, I forgot about Min. And yeah. what's her face? Avienda. Avienda. Oh, fuck, I forgot about Avienda. And Elaine. I think her name is Elaine. Yeah, Blonde. and Elaine. Yeah. And then Perrin's Biddy. Yep, Fail. Fail. I love Fail. She's great. Oh, fuck. And then you have the 12 Forsaken. 13. 13 Forsaken. Fuck. I thought it was 12. I think it's 13. I believe you. I don't. I'm not right. I could. Yeah, I couldn't name him right now either. I'm like going um, through. Yeah, but like Queens. It's been too long. Oh, you have Tom. Who yeah, I love Tom. Tom. I you based have, a uh, D&D character. A D&D NPC on Tom once. Yeah, all the leaders of the different hail tribes are kind of important too. Yeah, fuck. They are all important. Yeah, all the different kings. The, all the different like political leaders from all the different countries yeah. are important too. And then like the store like in the um Oh, Matt's Biddy too, the lady from the uh, Oh side. shit, the, the, the hmm. S. The like it starts with an S. Yeah. Um, there's a lot. Now that I'm thinking about it too, cuz there's also like w- like the this town that they're from and you have to learn all those Yeah, Brand's kind of names. dad is important too, like he comes back later and like leads the little like army that reports under Perrin. Yeah, I know. That's I'm, what we're giving away like, some spoilers there, yeah, yeah. But like that's what I'm referring to right now is like that whole portion of the la- like the last couple books. Yeah, and like not read. everybody needs to be like a big name, but it's like I can't come up with like non big names, and I can't come up with who's gonna play those people, and they're gonna have to spread spread the wealth. Yeah, they're gonna have to hire a lot of people. Yeah, here's the thing. I think that's what happened with Game of Thrones. Is like by the final season, you have your big names, and they're requiring a ton of money, so you can't bring in other big names to play big characters. And that's what's gonna happen with this too. Is they're gonna have like, like whoever plays Rand is gonna get big if this series gets big. Yeah, is gonna get big. Too, they probably aren't gonna be big now, 
but they're going to get big and they're going to start demanding more money. But, you know, to be fair to the books start to talk, like focus less on other characters. The more closer you get to the end. Rant. Yes. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I'm excited for that casting. I'm excited to see who else they cast. Yeah. It'll be cool. Yes. Uh, it'll definitely be interesting. Uh, yes. And we'll be watching it closely because it's, uh, like Raven said, my favorite book yeah. series. And I sure. really like it, too. Like, I like it a lot. I haven't made it all the way through, so I can't say, like, oh, yeah, that's my favorite book series. But, like, it's it's a very good book series, and I'm really enjoying it. Are but, you really enjoying it? Well, it's acting like know. you're actively still reading it. I'm not it. actively still reading it because e- there are 12 books in the series, though, right? Or 13. Uh, there might be 13. Yeah. Jesus Christ. 13. And then each book is, like... Might be twelve. I don't like, how many pages? A uh, thousand like, plus. Yeah, like twelve hundred, thirteen hundred. Yeah. It'd be like it's very like symmetrical, like that. Yeah. It's very long. Yeah, like but they fill good. up two shelves on a bookcase. Yeah, on our sure. bookcase specifically. So yeah, yeah, it's a lot. Okay, let's move on though and talk about our theme this week, which is our car, our new car. Yes, we got a Tesla. Model three. Tesla Model 3. Ah, it's so exciting. Yeah, it's Ba-da-ba. super great. So we wanted to talk, yeah, about uh, our car, just because we like it, and it's been dominating our mind. Uh, and also, like, talk a little bit about, like, uh, actually, you know, what the company's been doing, Tesla, yeah. why everybody should get one, because they're super dope. They're super dope. And a lot of people uh, have actually been asking us to talk about yeah, it, Yeah, I think, like, a lot of people out there, like, they, like there's still more information to be gathered about it. Yeah. Uh, on top of that, like, you know car buying decisions is buying a car right for you you know how do you evaluate that decision blah 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 yeah, things yeah. like that how what's the process work yeah etc what do you want to start with um so let's just start with tesla talk yeah. about like tesla as a company because i think in uh i don't remember when the roadster came out like a long time ago mm-hmm. and like i think you know uh when it came out it had some production problems had some performance problems but it was like a good like it was a big splash i think everybody would like everybody knows the tesla roadster uh knew it came out all electric little sports car um i know top gear did like an episode about it, it did, yeah. but i do remember when they did that episode and maybe i'm wrong but i'm like 99 percent sure i'm right they got one delivered for them to test drive around the track it didn't work so they had to get a second one delivered so those are like the types of problems we're talking about right right so Tesla's long like, had that. a couple that. years ago. This would have been like in 2011, I think. Or yeah. 12, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, because I think 2014 is when like, the Model S came starting out. Starting that conversation with, oh, hey, we got this car. It worked, but yours might not once it comes off the truck. That was why I was Well, yeah. So, it. like, yeah. So Tesla has gone a long way, I think. And that's Since where, like, then. yeah, we're, gonna, like, talking about the evolution of how their car worked. Because the Roadster was really, like, kind of this, like, concept car. And they were like, yes. hey, we can do this. Mm-hmm. The Model S came out and it was like very practical sedan, and by practical, the other thing I'll mention is it's super pricey, expensive. Yeah, and like that's the thing about the Model Three, and what maybe what people don't know is that what Tesla has been driving towards. They came out with the Model S. They came out with the Model X shortly after. They've gone through some hardware revisions of streamlining and making everything like this. The Model Three is the goal car. That is what. Elon and the other folks at Tesla had in mind when they were building this company all the way back at the Roadster. They were like, how can we get an electric car in every household? The same thing right. Microsoft thought when they were like, how do we get a PC in every household? Yep. Right? Uh, and their whole idea is, okay, we need like super streamlined efficiency because yeah, it's expensive to make is part of the problem. Batteries are expensive mm-hmm. uh, and making giant ones is expensive as well. I think when People were talking about the Prius a lot, right? The Prius hit sort of... I can't remember when the Prius came out, but it hit like people were buying used Priuses. And the big surprise was, oh, hey, you need to replace your battery. It cost 11 grand, right? So it's like, you just bought this used Prius. Oh, it was only like five grand. I saved so much money. It's so cheap. Nope, got to swap the battery. Right. Right. It was super expensive because car batteries that were, are that big are crazy. Mm-hmm. So like all this time they're like, so how can we save money on XYZ, you know, manufacturing, make it streamlined, make everything kind of work a little bit better. And like I said, the dream car was the Model 3. Uh, the Model 3 came out a couple of years ago, but had like a huge wait list. 
really long time uh, to, you know, general availability, which is where we're at now. Yeah. You can just walk in and get one yeah. or order it online, which is mm-hmm. what we did, which is crazy. It's really cool. Yeah. Like most cars. So if you've never bought a car before uh, and you're interested in buying a car. Yeah. And Jesse actually had like a lot of history in this because like he comes from a family that works is very in this involved business. in this business. Yeah. In the car buying business, not the electric car. Buying yes. Business. In the car industry, the automobile industry. Uh, but yeah, if you're if you're going to buy a car, you can expect it to take a long, lengthy process. It's stressful. It's, you know, you can have some cash on hand. You're going to have a trade in, whatever sort of stuff is going on. But you're going to be like bombarded by like twelve different people at the dealership. All yeah. like you'll feel the pressure. Most people consider it not an enjoyable experience. Right. Like we said earlier, Richard and Jenny just bought a car, and Richard said he's going to come onto the podcast and talk about it. He will, But yeah. they bought it today. They had to trade in their car, and they had to sit through paperwork. They got there at 9. They left at, like, one thirty, which is a really fast amount of time. Oh, yeah, I was surprised. That we were surprised it went that quick. I mean, they knew what they wanted, which is, so, general advice if you're going in, kind of know what you want. Yeah, test drive cars before you get there. Yeah, test drive, make an excuse, leave. Test drive, make an excuse, leave. Come up with your plan, do do the math, and yeah. be ready. Go in, do another quick test drive, and then commit, right? And and really double down, and it'll go faster and smoother. Anyways, uh, that's great advice. Off track. Yeah, but. So the difference that we had with buying the Model 3 was that you can purchase it. Oh, online. Online. Yeah. So you we just did everything add from the car to your cart. <laughs> I think for a little bit of it, you did it on your phone, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Like I would like price mount and see on my phone and do yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. And I was always doing that. Um, and like, so when we made our decision, we went and we, we were going to test drive a bunch of other cars, but we ended up only test driving a Tesla. Well, here's the other thing. So I drive to work. Jesse gets to work from home. Yeah. Um. So I it, it was mostly, it was our decision as a couple because it's a really important decision to have. But I think that one of the main things we wanted to focus with is what car I wanted and what car would work best for my commute since I would be in it. 90% of the time. Right. And I'll also say, like, we are down to a one-car household. So we were yeah. also looking for a car that would work, you know, I don't know. Like, right now, yeah, we don't drive yeah. other people around. So, like, well, we, well, we wanted the extra space, right? We wanted yeah. to... Because another car on our list was, like, the Mini Cooper. Yeah, I've always really wanted one that was, like... little zippy, tiny. Uh, yeah. Fits in spots easily. Yeah, exactly. Which is really important because we live in and work in, like, the Seattle area. So we want to make sure that Parking I can stuff. park... Um, that I feel comfortable, like, I, I like fast zippy cars that can, like, get out of there really quick, and so that's what I wanted, um, yeah. out of the Mini Coupe, and I thought that that, and, and four-door Mini Coupes are lame as a shit. Yeah, I wanted a two-door, and, um, I thought it'd look really cute. Exactly, yeah, it looked cute, yeah. <laughs> I look cute. But, you know, not practical for maybe if we need to fit people in the back, right. so, like. and also, Jesse is a tall man. People don't know this, but Jesse is six foot three. Yeah, And then weird. my parent my parents are my dad is like six foot two your dad is six foot three six foot four six foot fucking four y'all so like we have a huge family it's not like if we can't stick anybody really in those back seats it would not be fair so we but we went and we test drove one of those like a couple of months ago like maybe in last year yeah the mini we're talking about the now, mini yeah. and um we, we kept did that we in loved our mind. it we yeah. loved it though i absolutely fell in love with it but we were going to go back and test drive that one again yeah to compare more recently kind of side by side right but we worked with a great person at tesla greg so tesla also i'll say like they do not pressure you as much as other dealerships no yeah um it's very easy because i don't think and somebody can correct me if i'm wrong but they're i don't they're they don't actually get paid Mission? commissions. Uh, they get paid like a fee for every one they sell, right? But a lot of dealerships do that as well. And then also the commission factor, right? So like, you know, you get a lot of like pressure from the salesman where like Tesla's taking the approach of, you know, our guys are going to get paid right. the same basically it's if you also, buy or not. I think it, it depends on like, because Tesla, you can't negotiate their pricing either. Yes, that's a thing as well. Yeah. So most car buying situation, you can get like the Kelly Blue Look value, get the real true value, right? Whatever it is, go in, negotiate a car price down, 
uh, negotiate some, throwing in some free features. Basically, the way Teslas are packaged is like everything's in the car. Right. It's just a software switch, whether it's on or not. And it's just one price. You don't negotiate. Right. You can't get full self-driving for right. three grand instead of six. It's, it's like you're buying a computer, basically, that can also drive you around. Right. And so in that way, they've streamlined that process as well as the manufacturing process because they just make like one unit. Yeah. Uh, and that's how they're also able to make it. So the Model 3 is like so much cheaper than like the Model S and the Model cheaper. X. Yeah. Because they've and, come up with these efficiencies. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And that was kind of the design. The Model S and the Model X kind of got them traction in the market. Um, there's still more premium options. I think like the base price for the Model S is like 70000 and the base price for the Model X is like 80000 right? Like, and they go all the way up to like one thirty, one fifty. Right. Uh, but the base price for the Model 3 is, I think I want to say 31 or 41 I something thought it like was that. 39 So yeah, okay, so it's 39 to 41 then, because I think yeah. they include that. They do this thing, tricky if you are looking at Teslas, they do this thing. Make sure you turn off after savings let's see what the actual actual cost of the car is yeah right they do that that's kind of the one thing that's kind of tricky you're like oh man it's this nope that's after (laughs) theoretical gas savings which is great but that's not what you're paying right we need to know what we're paying now right so just make sure you make that toggle but like i was saying going back to the test driving um back to the test yes because we test drove the mini coupe i fell in love with that we we both really liked it because uh, I was test driving it, but Jesse was sitting in the passenger seat, and he really liked it, and he felt comfortable. But I'll say, it, like, if you test drive a Tesla, it's something completely different than you've ever been able to drive in your whole life. Yes, which absolutely test drive it to see if you can even... If you like it. Yeah, because you might be like, oh, man, this is too different and weird. Uh, especially right. the Model 3, so which is the one, you know, I think most people would buy anyways. Uh, yeah. But because like there's no, there's no speedometer. There's no like dash, yeah. Yeah, there's no uh, whatever instrument cluster. I think it's called right. There's just the big screen that we've all seen right in the middle. It's basically like That's a it. MacBook screen right there in the middle of your car. Yeah, I can't remember how big that one is. I think it's like 11 inches. I or... thought 13, but I maybe it's wrong. 13. Yeah, uh, yeah. Actually, I think it is 13. Yeah. It just seems like 13. Yeah, but yeah. So you got like a 13 inch screen in the middle of your car. That's it. It should, does show your speed on there. It shows. That's how you control your radio station. Yeah, like that's navigation. how you turn your uh, windshield wipers on. That's how you uh, turn on um, your music. That's how you play games in Tesla Arcade. Yeah, which is super dope. Yeah. That's uh, how you like change the temperature in the car. So turning it up, it's putting on butt warmers. Yep. It all works out of there. And I will say that that took... When we were first test driving it, that was probably the one thing that I felt the strangest. Right. Was it was very unnatural to look there. Now I, I couldn't even think twice. It's it's there. It's, yeah, it's there. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty easy to to you get accustomed get to, to I think. But yeah, again, test drive. Make sure that you're yeah, not going to be like, cool what the it. fuck? Yeah, exactly. So let's talk about some of the cool things. Yeah. So I think what's really great about the Model Three is it's a really cool looking car. Oh, it's so pretty. Have, we yeah. got black, by the way. Yes. And we are calling it VV, like off of Final Fantasy IX. Yep, that's our plan. Yep, black mage. Yeah. So yep. you get to name your car. That's super fun, right? Yeah. Uh, some of the other things. So, like, with it, uh, you know, from the outside, you have your front trunk, your frunk. Your frunk. Yep, and you have the back trunk. Super spacious in the back trunk. The frunk is basically, like, I, we put our, like, charging equipment in there. Mm-hmm. Cause like <laughs> I don't think it's you could really fit anything small. else, uh, like one bag of groceries. Yeah, they said yeah in the test drive he was like, oh yeah, you put your groceries up there, and I'm also like, but I'm already if I like I'm park in a regular space, I'm still at the trunk first, so I might as well just pop yeah. it in the trunk. Yeah, it's kind of useless, but like, what were they gonna do? There's no engine, uh, so the, exactly. it's on the electric bottom. motors are built into the axles, which is really great again for efficiency. You have a problem so, with so- the motor. Tesla service takes it, they zip zip, take the axle off, yeah. zip zip, put on a new one, you drive off, and then they'll figure out what's wrong. Right, and then the You're other done. thing with uh, the, 
the engine being kind of in the axle is that it has a better like distributed weight the weight is better so, distributed. Yeah, yeah it's better distributed so like you can either do all-wheel drive or rear rear wheel drive and so it rear wheel drive works better it's uh you know yes have... it's not like rear wheel like rear wheel drive is like most commonly associated with like sports cars yeah uh so a lot of which this is considered a compact sports sedan so, um, but yeah, a lot of sports cars have it and they, they kind of like fishtail. They do do some other things that are like a little more difficult. Tesla does not have that reputation with their rear wheel drive cars. Right. Exactly. They get and a lot better handling. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other thing that I was thinking of with that in mind is, so the entire top of the car is uh, glass, glass and because the, the engine is on the bottom, it has less, like a very light, like less likely chance of ever flipping because like center of gravity of it's it so, is so so low. low yeah which actually that was one thing i was reading so a lot of people like so there is some concern people have like so if you live in a high snow area with the model 3 in particular so the model s probably as well but the model x is going to be fine in a lot of those areas because it's higher up off the ground because that's the suv yeah it's an SUV. model x the model s and model 3 are like low hanging cars so they're they're bottom they have less clearance than your typical car uh, because all that battery and stuff is down there. Mm -hmm. So like in most of the, most places where it snows a lot, yeah, some roads are cleaned off and those would be fine. But some roads, it's more like you're driving in the tracks of other cars and that snow starts to build up in the middle. And that's going to mess up with... Yeah, well, it's been known, like there could be rocks in there, stuff like that, that are known to like really kind of hit that. Well, and it's like throw the, yeah, the batteries, right? So it'll hit the batteries really hard sometimes. And if you have a lot of repeated abuse like that, that's where you know you're gonna you get to, some damage yeah. and some problems and stuff like that so people are complaining about now that new suspension the raven or whatever which is hey. going to be in the x Ooh. and the s sorry guys we'll be able to adjust it but it, that new suspension's not going in the model three yeah when we were so. test driving because uh uh the my name is actually raven it's not like a stage name but um a lot of people or the guy that we were test driving with kept like freaking out because my name is raven and they were gonna have a new suspension and it's called the raven and yada yada it was funny yeah it's a thing so yeah, but yeah that, sh it. that should help some with that but the model 3 is concerned if it snows a lot by you you know think, about, think that. about it yeah, stop yeah. About it. but yeah um so that's like the exterior of the car it's super slick looking so if you've pretty. ever seen it um the door handles um you press in so it's like it looks like, it's a, like a little handle. like a j yeah kind of looking curved kind of kind of looks like a golf club and so you'd hit like the the bottom part of it you like press into that with your thumb and then the, the like, handle, handle pops out, comes yeah. out and at the and same time like, as you do that like the window kind of does that little thing yeah, where it comes down, down, down a little bit, bit so it does this clear and then if it if it recognizes me if it connects to my phone um it'll start playing whatever yeah. music i was listening to yeah so that's what so the keys so when you take delivery of your model three you yes. don't get keys you get a card. A wee little card. Yeah, it's like the size of a credit card. It's like a little RFID card. Um, and that's it. So you tap that on. When you look at the outside of a Model 3, you can see all these little cameras all over the place. It's mm -hmm. really dope. There's uh, so many. It's there's wonderful. so many cameras, yeah. And like that's how like it does its fancy automation systems, which we'll talk about in a bit. But So you tap the card underneath the camera on the center pillar, which is like the pillar in between the front door and back door. Yeah. And that's how you like can open the car um to, or unlock it and that's how you lock it to you tap it uh, if and you then, have the key card right well that's so the key card is and then you place the, there's a certain spot in the car where you place the key card and that's like because there's no that's like slot ignition. to stick it in that's yeah your ignition. there's not an ignition the or car is always on and always ready to go as long as there's a key registered which is super cool right? it's really cool and it doesn't use up that much of like the your energy battery. that yeah. you use yeah and um and it has like some sleep sleeps. functions it'll yeah. like sleep after like a while yeah i think it's like a couple hours it goes to yeah. sleep or something but anyway so that is one key the other key uh well so we actually bought the uh, another key yeah they have the keys that like the, te the like key fobs are super cool they look like tiny versions of they your look car. like tiny versions of the car yeah. you want to open the frunk you click on the frunk on the little key on the key. yeah yeah we named ours little vb yeah you can name your keys too. yeah you can name the keys uh, that one's called little vb 
and uh, which is my rap name, by the way, uh, if I ever became a rapper. Um, and then uh, we said that that's Ripley, our dog. Yeah, we just keep it hanging that's on her. her. <laughs> we absolutely don't need that key, but we had to have uh-huh. it because it's super cool looking. It's really cute. Um, and it's useful, like, if you want to give a key to, like, valet because we're bougie yeah a valet or or like your friends because they need to borrow your car or if you're getting your car detailed like yeah clean or something yeah yeah. because like you don't want to go like oh hey here's this card here's how you use it now you're like here you go man it's like a regular key yeah just use it yeah yeah but the cool key option the best key option option. is your phone so your phone is your key yep you walk up to the door it already knows who you are you open it. It's like, oh, hey, great. Welcome back, Raven. Starts yeah. playing your music, right? Yeah. It doesn't it's... say welcome back, Raven, but I w- I'm hoping one day it will. Yeah, one day it probably will. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it like automatically like picks it up. Automatically like unlocks itself as you approach, right? Automatically yeah. locks when you start moving away. Yeah, when you leave. Right? And if you have your phone in your pocket, you just get in the car, hit drive, and go. Yep. And then another, like, really cool thing from the app, you have a lot of control of what you can do. You can, like, set temperatures in the car from there. You can um, unlock the door, lock the door. You can open up the trunks. You can see where your battery is. You can summon the car. You can see where the car is at all times, too, which is actually really Mm -hmm. nice, yeah. So, like, say you park somewhere downtown, you gotta do some stuff, and you're like, okay, well, Well, now I need to get to the car. So one thing that's very, was, like, really trippy to me is like i park in a garage underneath my building but i guess i parked like in a spot that isn't technically the address because it's underneath but it's still a part of well gps2 is only accurate only so accurate but it said it wasn't in my building and i was like um excuse me (laughs) right like who knows yeah Yeah. like if your car gets stolen you'll know yeah Yeah. though i don't have not heard of any reports of tesla's getting stolen yet so yet I think it seems pretty difficult. They're pretty difficult to hack. Unless I leave my phone in the car, which uh, I'm happens. not. Yeah. I forget. That's like leaving your key in the car. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so yeah, the other one you were mentioning is Summon. So we can kind of get into the Yeah, that's a feature that you can features. do from yeah. the little like little VV key fob. Little key fob, yeah, you can do little, it. It's just a little key fob. <laughs> yeah, which the key fob works on like radio frequency. So you can do the Summon without like, cause so if you're doing it from your phone, the car has cell signal, you have to have cell signal. Yeah. And they talk up and down to each other. So there's like a little delay. And also like if you're deep in a garage. Say, yes. I like the first day that I drove it to work, I was in the bottom floor of my garage because I got there obviously so late. And um, I could still use the the Tesla app. It wasn't like I couldn't use my car now because I couldn't use the yeah. app. We're I didn't talking need like my car really to- crowded places and really deep down. Like it might be hard to get a signal right uh, maybe because i i definitely ha- was able to get the car working and i didn't need the card which you should always have the card on you like in your wallet and yeah i would say just like throw that in your wallet yeah yeah um but i didn't need to use that when i was on the bottom floor of the garage yeah but yes yeah, so summon though um is a function that you can use to basically without being in the car bring the car to you yep and like so if you're using it from your phone it's it's pretty simple and i think even like right now like they haven't come out with you know one thing about tesla is is so because their cars are so software based and things like that is like there will be updates and things like that that you can just get over the air and your car's performance will improve Mm -hmm. summon is on the roadmap for what they're calling like advanced summon and smart summon where like you know so summon lets you yeah like move the car in and out of a parking spot forward or reverse right that's basically the limitations of summon yeah that's all you can do so like imagine it's really dope oh yeah it's super cool fucking the the coolest thing i'm like that's the only thing you can do it's like shit you can have your car come to you without being in it right like imagine a scenario where you park in a spot and you know every we've all been in there and it's like this the doors it's too tight you can't get out Mm -hmm. right line your car up get out shut the door push the car back the summon exactly right or you know the same thing is like it's too tight somebody parked really close to you asshole right <laughs> yeah. now you can't get in pull your car up get in there yeah. you go um the advanced like smart summon stuff that's like on the roadmap, which you can do a little bit more of with the key fob because uh, the car can kind of hone in to exactly where you are because again gps in your phone is not as accurate as this radio frequency that is like pinpoint like it knows exactly where you are with the key fob 
Yeah. So the key fob will be kind of getting this first before the phone, but you can say walk into a uh, parking lot, you know, any public parking lot like we have a lot of in Seattle. You parked your car somewhere, you don't want to walk to it, summon it. Or you forget where you put it. Yeah. The car pulls out of the spot, navigates the parking lot, and pulls right up to you. Right? And this sort of scenario is like, I don't know, you're at a restaurant, you're about to walk out the front door. Just go ahead and summon the car. It'll be waiting right there for you, right? Yeah. At the front door when you walk out. Yep. Sort of things like that, right? Yeah. Uh, so that's summon. Summon's really cool. It's cool. Um, another thing that goes with summon, which I think is Jesse's favorite part, is the autopilot uh, function, yeah. which is really all what it sounds like. It can the car will drive itself in this mode by itself on its own and this is a major selling highway. point of the uh tesla ecosystem so i mentioned all the cameras and sensors and stuff earlier and you know that's like the the thing about tesla so a lot of people are doing these like smart um cruise control like driving assist. adaptive cruise control driving assist lane departure assist uh, and they're all doing it trying to play catch up tesla because they had this idea prior um the hardware platform 3.0 that they're on uh, which is the one that, you know, the Model 3 is built around and supports is fully built to support self-driving. Like, that is the end game here. The first end game was to develop, like, a nice, cheap, easy, for not cheap, affordable electric car uh, that the masses could get. The next step of that plan is to have them drive themselves, yeah. right? And that's where they're getting to. Yeah. And we're talking, and it like... Is- the coolest yeah thing. <laughs> we're talking like super great like it can literally drive itself like if you've used it in another car and you know what we're talking about you'll be like oh yeah that can't be that good no, no it's that good it's fucking good um so basically the way that it works is it only works on highways right now but i think within the year they're hoping that it can recognize like stop signs and lights yeah so that it'll stop but the way that it works is you like initiate it like as you're entering the freeway and then from there it just takes you and there's also a feature uh, if you get the self full self driving right. where you can navigate on autopilot and it'll take you there the only thing that you have to do is when you always have to lightly like move the wheel yeah, to like prove that you're still seconds, there. Yeah, which we've all seen articles, somebody like sleeping or whatever. And this is the reason why. Yes. Back in the day, they didn't have this and those fuckers screwed it up for us. Yeah, they fucked us all so over. So now we all have to I touch the wheel. Yeah. playing a switch while I'm driving. Yeah, we, just, we have a trip down to Portland coming up and we joke like, oh man, we could like watch Netflix. Yeah, exactly. Uh, while we're on it, you know, because like in the car itself has like a web browser. Yeah. You know, so I assume you could Which, just... Yeah. You go to Netflix.com. Well, why test it out? It's not worth it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. You have so, yeah. to touch the wheel, so... You have to touch the wheel, and then for the navigate portion, it will not change lanes without, basically, your permission. So, it asks you, like, hey, you have a lane change coming up, or, hey, we noticed that, like, Yeah, use this your turn lane signal to confirm. Yeah. Yep. And you use your turn signal, and then it navigates that for you, too. You still don't have to do anything. Like, even It'll in, like, lane traffic, change. too. Like, yep, it adjusts for traffic, like, speed, so it knows how fast. A, it knows the speed limit on the road at all times. All the time. Um, and then it also knows, like, you know, okay, generally cars around me are going five over. I'll go five over, too. Yeah. It can anchor itself to the car in front of you, and when they stop, it stops. And it keeps going yeah. when they start going again. Uh, yeah. I mean, it does everything for you. Yeah. Literally, and like it stays in the middle of the lane, and like I think once you get used to it, yeah, it's light years ahead of the competition. Yeah, and it is very like jarring at first on the test drive. We actually tested the autopilot function, of course, yeah, uh, not on navigate, but just the just like driving on the highway, and um, yeah, it's it like when you first it takes some getting used to, but I've tried, I've had to, or I haven't had to do it, but I've done it a couple times on my morning commute. I did it this morning when I got my hair done, um, and yeah. it was so much fun because literally you could just like have a cup of coffee. Just exactly, kind of... it will like. And once they get on this, like we opted into the full self driving option is six thousand dollars extra. I think it's worth it for maybe not for what they have now, which is the navigate on autopilot, uh, yeah, the yeah. lane turn, 
and summon. Those are the features you pay extra for. Uh, but what they're going to get with that surface street stuff, like we're talking like your commute in the morning, the whole time is going to be mm -hmm. autopilot. Like literally, yeah. yeah, it'll save you frustration. Yeah, uh, I think that it'll also be, the. I think the one thing that would be really nice is having it on when I'm in stop and go traffic because I do not take the highway um most days most days because of stop and go traffic specifically going like south and that would be my commute home and so i take back roads which still has some stop and go traffic yeah so it's I'd definitely rather, faster it's yeah. faster and i would rather just be on that and then just kind of like chill yeah and we're talking like it, it maybe not when they come out with it immediately but in the next couple of years after it comes out and it gets a little better mm -hmm. you could probably legit like you know yeah be texting the whole time yeah. up on your Eat phone a road taco yeah pull out your laptop and continue working right for anybody yeah. who wants to convince their boss to buy them one as a company car yeah you know yeah yeah easy we do always always recommend being completely vigilant while you drive because right. other not people there are yet. idiots yeah. yeah and like i think you'll see videos if you look online elon is in his and most of the time he like doesn't pay attention at all i'm actually not Certain that he has to put his hands on the wheels thir he 30 probably, seconds. He his, probably yeah. got an engineer to turn that off for him. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, but he has a lot of confidence people, in the system. There have been people that have almost gotten into accidents because a deer have been jumped accidents out. Even, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, Richard saw one on the side of the, the road the other day, smashed in with another car. Yeah. So we don't know who was at fault. We don't need details on that accident. But, you know. It happens. There are other people on the road without yeah. such smart cars. And sometimes smart cars make mistakes. That's how they learn. It's true. Yeah. Um, what else? Um, so another cool function, which I actually showed on Twitter and Instagram, is um, for all the dog owners out there. Oh, so yeah. Specific, like, it's always been kind of a problem, but it's gotten more like recently because like, if you leave your dog in a hot car, they will die. Like, it's not just like... Don't be those trashy people that just leaves their car, their dog in a car with the yeah. windows rolled up and without any access to water and you're gone for like hours. You're going to go see a fucking movie or something. Don't be those people. But a Tesla, what it will do is you can put it in dog mode and it'll keep the air conditioning running. Um, ours is set at 69. Well, so I will say that. It keeps the air conditioner running all the time anyways. All the time. But That's now true. it just puts something on the screen so that anybody who walks by will see. And won't smash your window. Yeah, open. and you might have a custom temperature set for your pooch, yeah, right? Yeah, Because, like, some people, I think, with the auto on, like, AC climate control thing, have that set a little higher. Yeah. Because, you know, save a little bit of energy. But still, like, we, you, know, you don't lose much. Like, I think for a full day at work, oh. you only lose, like, a mile of charge or so. so. Right, exactly. But with this... Um, both what you could dog do, mode, yeah. yeah, dog mode. It it basically just kind of keeps in mind that people do have pets, and sometimes you have to take your pets with you somewhere. And you have to leave them in the car, and you want to keep them safe without keeping your car running. Yeah, exactly. But your car is still running. It's still running. But, it's beautiful. But it's beautiful. That's what's great about the car. Literally, that's my favorite part. Is that like you can just get in. You don't have to like hit the start button or whatever, no, and go. it's always on. It's just on, and yeah. it's so. Guys, it's so fucking quiet. Yeah, there's no noise. There is literally no noise. Like, I'll get in the car and I'm like, okay. And then for anybody who's, like, really into performance, too, check it out. They oh, are so, so fast. It's so speedy. They beat a lot of gasoline-powered cars because, really, it's about the torque, right? And the electric motor provides so about much torque, torque instantly. Um, so Raven mentioned, I think we got the rear-wheel drive one, which is the standard range. Mm-hmm. So the options usually are your standard range, uh, your long range, and then your performance models. Kind of the difference between, at least for the Model 3, I think maybe for the Model S as well, but the Model X, they're all all-wheel drive. Um, but between the Model 3 is, in the standard range, it's rear-wheel drive, which we mentioned before, you know, has a different weight distribution than what you're thinking of probably. So drive one, I think you'll be pleased with it. Um, where the long range one is an all wheel drive vehicle. Cause literally all it is, is instead of having just one axle with a battery on it, it has two with a battery active. Um, right. The performance one is that, and then they turn on some little tricks in the motors to get you a little bit extra performance. 
Yeah. Also comes with red brake calipers and some dope wheels. But yeah, yeah the wheels are pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but something to note for uh, for people who are looking at the wheels, though, because I will say, because for first, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to upgrade the wheels because these little... Because we didn't love the way they looked. They do look super great in person, though. Yeah. Uh, and the aero wheels that they are. So think, bear in mind, everything about this car is built for, like, this efficiency and, like, Conserving things. energy. Yeah, they get you something, like, between 10% in your daily driving to 20 and 30 percent on like long range highway trips extra mileage out of your battery yeah that's because they're so aerodynamic yeah Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of like when they when i read that i was like okay well why am i paying like two thousand dollars extra for wheels that are going to cost me more and yeah they look cool but i think it's really like i think in like the pictures that you see, like the renderings almost on the website. Yeah, they're really they flat look, looking. They look really flat. The color looks off. They make it look more gray because they are gray. Yeah. But in person, because our car is black, like it it's a really, really well good black. Blend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so maybe and then maybe that's it too. I mean, maybe in the other colors it won't look. Maybe as good. we just really like the car, so we just really yeah. Who knows? We can't find anything wrong but, with it. But yeah. So the other thing between the three models that is a little different is the range you're going to get out of the battery so our car uh the standard range for the model 3 is 240 miles to a charge to a full charge uh the long range is 310 Ten. miles yeah. i don't know what the performance i think it's like three or four like you lose a little bit mm-hmm. something like that i don't know um and i don't know what it is for the model s and the model x but it says clearly on the site when you're building it out so i think when if you are looking at this car and it's something interesting for you and and whatever think about what you need because we did the math raven does 12 miles a day um, to and from work without to and going from work anywhere else. six miles and six miles back yeah uh we don't often go places later in the day and things like that so then we did a whole we had one whole week of like testing it out and we lost about 20 to 25 miles uh worth of charge every day so that's you know driving efficiency uh stop and go traffic is obviously worse than like highway driving exactly um you know plus like it's on all the time so when it's just sitting in the garage it loses a little so we didn't charge for a whole week on the standard range car and we still had 111 miles left Mm -hmm. at the end of the week yeah so, you know, realistically, if you have, like, a big, long commute, you might charge a couple times a week with that car. But I don't think any of us are looking at a commute that's, like, going to use up all that 240 miles and you're charging every night. Because one thing is, so Hopefully after not. that week, too, we had to charge up, you know, 150 miles or something after we took it somewhere. It was four and a half hours to charge that with our home wall charger. Yes. So, which there are different wall connectors. Um, there are different places electric to charge too. Thing. Yeah, and some people might not be able to charge at home. Uh, for the longest time, we lived in an apartment, and we didn't really think it was feasible to have a place to charge. But now, after driving it and like realizing how often we would have to charge, you know, most cities have a charge spot. Yeah, I have one in my uh, in your office garage. Building, yeah. yeah, in my parking garage. And they work. give you the like adapters and connectors to make it work with all those. Yes, There's also just... Tesla superchargers all over. Yes. And another really cool thing about um, the Tesla that comes kind of with it is on your navigation, it'll show you where a supercharger is. So what you can do is if, say, you're making, like, we're going to Portland, like we said. Yeah, it's and... about 150 miles there and 150 miles back. Which, so we'll need to charge at some point during this trip. Exactly. So uh, uh, one thing that we're able to do because of that is we can program the supercharger, like, just with the click of a button. We don't have to, like, look it up on Google and, like, then get the address and put the address in. It automatically, like, kind of factors that into your trip time so that you don't have to then figure out where you're going to get a charge. And it makes it easy. So it'll also... We're going to do autopilot, navigate by autopilot, like, the whole time. Yep. So um, it'll automatically just take us to the supercharger and then take us back on our route. Yep, exactly. So dope. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. And, like, the thing to note, superchargers, it's like going to a gas station. Like, you know, it's not five minutes at a gas station. It's, like, 45 minutes. But it's not going to be the whole four and a half hours to charge up either. Right. It's going to be a quick, quick charge. 
Yeah, a quick, quick charge, for sure. Because, like, the superchargers go really quickly. I mean, that's, like, their whole thing is, like, they don't want people to be there all the time. Another cool thing that it'll show you on the little screen is how many people are there, too. Like, how many available spaces are there so you know how long you're going to be waiting to get your charge, which is also great. Yeah, though I do think, like, that doesn't show people who are parked in those spots who aren't charging. Oh, fuck them. I'll tow their car. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't think we'll have any problems on our trip, but I've heard the one and in Issaquah. Issaquah? Uh, I think that's probably the problem. That's the problem? All right. Yeah. Fuck that place. Yep. Yeah, as people use those spots, like the regular parking spots, but they're not. Uh, but yeah, so the supercharger is super fast. Um, be- below that is the wall charger, which we're fortunate to have. Uh, yeah, super fast, where you four get and a half it kind of installed. Yeah. It's by an directly plugged into the, the electric box. Uh, then there's like the 220 volt charging and 110 volt charging and you know they get down to the point where like I think the 110 it would take you like all day to charge charge your car like 24 hours fully yeah so like Sundays is spent all day charging your car while you use the rest of the week to so you know take that into account when you're making your decision all wheel drive is about ten thousand dollars more though so is the extra range needed you know is the all wheel drive needed yeah. Everything else that comes with it is really just sort of uh, small time stuff. Uh, yeah. Mats. I think mats for your car. We ordered some on Amazon for like 70 bucks. Right. Yeah. Not worth it. Uh, the key also was uh, more expensive than what is absolutely necessary. But it's You don't have cute. to buy the key fob. Yeah. The key fob we just wanted. Save your money if you don't want it and honestly like we'll probably never use it but it's kind of cool yeah and i think one thing that people um are thinking like we got this car it's costing us a ton of money obviously but it's really not it's really affordable and what it is is tessa's like entry car like you get this and it's gonna make you really be well it made us want to be a tesla customer for life and i think that's what they're really trying to do here is like Get people in. Well, yeah, I think they're, they're getting people in and they know everybody uh, can't Pretty afford dumb. everything. Yeah, so. Exactly. Um, it's a way more affordable option. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think so everybody should check it out if you're in the market for a new car. If you're in the market. If, yeah, that price range works for you, and definitely then, guys, check it out. it helps out the world. Like, come on. Uh, it's the carbon energy. footprint of creating a car is worse than, I think, a gas car. Probably. But if, uh, I mean, like, everybody's gas consumption, whatever. Guys, it is, it's still, you're still doing your part. If people are, if the carbon emissions from creating the car and then also the gas combined. You'd have to drive the car for like 11 years, but the batteries don't last that long. So you have to get a new battery and then it's worse. (laughs) So like, it's like. Whatever. Yeah. It still helps. It still helps the world in general. We're going to keep going with that because they're probably going to make that more efficient. It'll get better at some point. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. To deliver the cars, they use like self-driving trucks yeah okay so that's actually something we didn't talk about is the delivery of the car so they dropped oh, it off yeah. at our house dropped you don't have to go to a dealer own. and they no. drove off in our old car yeah we ordered, ordered it own. and it said it was going to be about two weeks from where we ordered it yeah and that was it kind does of a take frustrating, about that long yeah yeah that, that portion was kind of frustrating because you're not working really with anybody even the guy we test drove with didn't yeah, really you're just kind of sitting there and you're like on a limb. what and because everybody knows kind of how car buying should work and this wasn't anything like that but it was still pretty great i think if our expectations about like being contacted afterwards were kind of um like lowered slightly i think well it yeah been now fine. that we've done it once i'm like, I'm like okay. totally fine but whatever yeah yeah we ordered it jesse heard from a couple people mostly like a couple of days before it was going to be delivered and then it was delivered and the person that we worked with was super nice went through kind of everything signed paperwork yada yada and then he left and he yeah we traded in our other car so he took our car um and then it went bye-bye yeah that's it yeah and that's that gonna be it. the future right like order it online mm-hmm. they'll drive it to you they drive off in your old car yeah. uh and you're good to go and then you got a new car yeah. it was like thursday morning we got it uh we tooled around for like a couple hours and then raven cool. went to work i went to work i drove yeah. it on my own is there anything else you want to talk about with the car? Uh, no. I mean, I don't 
really think people find it super interesting to talk about anything else but you know those are the cool stuff the interior is super beautiful and very soft yeah leather and i think like tesla has enough information out there on the car for sure so if you are interested but yeah tesla's come a really long way too like we're not talking about like like how much rpm it gets and yada 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 i don't really even know any of those terms we're casually talking about our new car purchase yeah and like I was going to say yeah. to you about like Tesla's horses? come a really far away. You know, I think if it had been three, four years ago, yeah, I would have loved to own a Tesla because they were like super luxury cars, but I'm not sure what would have been the best use of my $120,000 that I would have had to have had at the time. Oh yeah. We so have all that money. Right. Like if I had 120 grand back then, I probably had to spend on a car. I probably wouldn't have done a Model S, right? Yeah. Uh, but now today, Tesla's come a long way. Um, they still get bashed a little bit on consumer reports. I think it's a little political, though. They're nitpicking some things that I think they forgive in some other cars. Right. Um, but that's neither here nor Anyways, there. Anyways, uh, yeah. But yeah, they've come a really far away with the Model 3. This is the car they have been gearing towards forever. And if you're one of those people that, like, you know, doesn't want to be too much of an early adopter, but doesn't want to miss out on the early adoption, this is the time the is good, to yeah. get it, to get the Model 3, to get into the tesla environment especially because the model y is coming out i love the model y yeah we're gonna buy a model y one billion percent we like it uh it is definitely the car we wanted the model y is like a crossover suv it's a smaller suv than the model x yes so the model x is the suv version of the model s model y is the suv version of the model 3 so again everything's been building towards the model 3 this is just the bigger SUV kind of version, and it's a small SUV, so. Which, yeah. Yeah, it'd be perfect for us, yeah. Um, yeah. We don't need the big one yet. But yeah, so I think, you know, it's coming out. The wait list is already two years long, so you're not going to get one when it comes out. But. I mean, you could. You can get you have the Model 3 and dip your toe in the water, see if you like it, uh, and then get yourself a Model Y when that that one's there, and. You'll be right in the ecosystem. I think once Model Y hits, like we're going to be seeing Teslas two or three times as much on the road as we're seeing them now. And we're going to start seeing, like everybody will be driving one, right? And then also at the same time, what's supposed to come out then, which is also supposed to be really cool, is the... So when your car, when you're not driving your car, and it's just sitting in your garage, and you're making a car payment, like say 300 bucks a month, you're paying 10 bucks a day, and you don't go anywhere on Sunday... That's pretty lame, right? Mm-hmm. So what if your car, because it's super smart, can drive itself now, was just going around picking people up and dropping them off places and yes. earning you a little bit of extra money? Yeah. By itself. So that is on the roadmap, people, and that is super cool. Yeah. I'm not as comfortable with that as, like, Jesse is, but I like I like the idea of our car making us money. I don't like the fact that I'm not in it, and they get their grummy little hands on it these well, trash goblins yeah i mean you uh you drive the model y and you have the model 3 in the garage and the model 3 is just a workhorse and it's paying for your model y that's true <laughs> so yeah all right let's wrap it up yeah um so i hope you guys enjoyed this episode uh again next week is our q a episode uh so it's gonna be really question and answer heavily focused because we got a lot um and so stay tuned for that um until then you can find us on social media at co-op the podcast um that's on twitter facebook instagram you can also find us on our website co-op the podcast.com and patreon.com slash co-op the podcast uh you can also find me on uh scraticus academy twitch.tv slash scraticus if you want to watch me play dungeons and dragons on thursdays last episode is july 11th that's the next one i'm going to be in and the last one i'm going to be in uh for fading footsteps so give that a listen you can find my lovely beautiful husband on social media where yep at jesse j-e-s-s-e-c-o underscore o-p and that's on twitter instagram not facebook no not on facebook uh on reddit i am co-op the podcast yeah you can find us on reddit we have really cool uh yeah i bounce around on subs yeah comment on random things yeah recently i just told a guy how to fuck off kill his neighbor okay maybe don't do that 
D- is hey. the uh, liability clause that we put at the beginning of this, does that work for uh, Reddit, too? <laughs> Probably. I don't <sighs> know. Uh, but yeah, he just needed some advice. Gave it. It's cool. No, maybe don't do that. Maybe don't yeah, do that. Yeah, we do that. But yeah, so where can they find you, though? They can find me at Raven underscore co-op um, or Coop however you want to say it, on Twitter and Instagram. And guys, if you're not busy, I know you live such uh, meaningful lives, and we totally appreciate that. But if you wouldn't mind giving us a review on your preferred podcast of choice, that'd be like the best. That'd be the tits. Um, Give us five stars. Uh, We don't accept anything less or anything more, just five. Um, And leave us a review about how much you love us. Yep, for sure. Do that stuff so that we can uh, bump our ratings up on iTunes. And yeah, so more people can find us and share. Like on, in, like if you really like this episode, share it on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Yada yada. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, that's it. All right. Later. Okay. Bye.